be here. Today we're going to be talking about an introduction to TechSoup's website services and we're going to share some success stories. I'm excited about our partners here from TAP Network. I'm going to let you know how you can engage in the webinar. You are on mute as you already know, so we would love for you to type your questions in the Q&A and we'll answer them at the end. They may answer some questions throughout the presentation, but usually when we have a large number, we'd like to answer them at the end. We're going to email you the slides the video and they'll have some hyperlinks so you can get in touch with our partners right after this. I want to say right after this, maybe by tomorrow. And if you need the closed caption, go ahead and type on the CC button right in the bottom of your Zoom screen so that you can use the closed caption to, you won't miss anything when you're reading the closed caption. I kind of like the closed caption myself. So I want to tell you about um, Quad before I turn it over to our speakers. If you have not joined Quad or you're interested in learning more about Quad, I'll put the link in the chat. But Quad is a new um, feature that we have here at TechSoup. And I'll, I'll show you on the next slide just how you can engage in Quad. There's so many other things that you can do with Quad, like um, have our courses and get to know um, you're in smaller groups rather than being in you know larger groups. So I'll put the link in the chat and you can learn more about Quad. I'm going to get ready to turn this over to our partners. We have Kyle Barkins. He is the co-founder of TAP Network. And then we have Melissa Pitt. She is the director of client services. And they will tell you more about um, TAP Network and the services they offer here. So thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for everybody who's been putting in the chat everything that they want to do, like overhaul their uh, website. They want to completely overhaul. Some people say they're still deciding. Some people say they want to upgrade it to make it more accessible and easy to navigate. So there's so many things that you all want to do. And we're so glad you're here. Lapita, I love what you said. You want to do a full overhaul. So I'm sure Kyle's going to share more with you. I'm going to turn it over to him and thank Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Rita. It sounds like we got a lot to cover in an hour today. So uh, just jump right in. Um, just a quick agenda. I'm stealing Melissa's thunder here uh, on these slides. Um, just we're going to go through an introduction of TAP, who we are, uh, who, you have, who, we, who we have the pleasure of talking uh, with today, with you all on the call as well. Um, our custom website development offerings, some of the, the different services that you'll see through throughout TechSoup. Um, We'll go through some of those different things and then we're going to cover a lot of like success stories that we think are really relevant to, to you all and some of the the things we're more proud of um, that we've we've covered in the past more in the past year or so um, that maybe that will address some of those questions you guys had uh, as you guys plan out 2024. so just quick background on myself and melissa um my i spent about 20 years in the marketing application development space uh in this time i've i've launched managed been part of um more than a thousand different websites uh for nonprofits. probably about 2500 uh, in total at this point some of the ones that are the most exciting that i, I like to always point back to um, at one point we developed designed developed and deployed websites for more than 250 uh professional athletes. So everything from professional NFL players to race car drivers to uh, to athletes. And I'll let Melissa give a quick background on herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa. I am the Director of Client Services for TAP. I oversee uh, all of our website projects and kind of the process for approaching those. Um, my background is in digital marketing and advertising, which has included uh, website development throughout that experience. And for TAP, the company that we're here kind of talking to you from today, um, we've been around for about almost going on 12 years now. Uh, we are we really focus on purpose-driven, mission-driven organizations and empowering organizations for good. Um, so taking the learnings, taking the work that we've done on these large enterprise type clients and and repurposing that, reusing that to, to help um, help in the nonprofit space and really propel uh, the mission-driven organizations forward. For some of our background, we've worked on clients of all shapes and sizes, you know, multi-billion dollar industries like Denso, uh, CSC, the green energy space, uh, health insurance, healthcare. But we're especially proud of the work we've done uh, in the nonprofit space, in the community-driven environment. So working with anything from like two-on-one programs in multiple different states, uh, working with the state of California through the Child Mind Institute to educate uh trainers and students on, on bullying and cyberbullying in, in in classrooms, working with 
you know, companies in our, or organizations in our own backyard for pathways and workforce development programs. It really runs the gamut uh, of the work in the background that we have uh, in this space. You'll see some, some of the ways that TAP can help you. So we're gonna talk through today, uh, you know, more of our website focused services and hosting, but we do, we kind of run the gamut uh, in, the, in the marketing and technology space, everything from strategy to creative branding, to PR, uh, to custom web and application development. So we're going to start getting into uh, websites for nonprofits and by all of your responses for your goals for 2024, it seems like you're well aware of why these websites are important. Uh, the website that you have for your organization is essentially your, your digital storefront, right? So uh, in place of a kind of brick and mortar location, uh, it doesn't mean you have to sell something there. It's just your, you know, a home base for your nonprofit. You can use it to enhance engagement with your various stakeholders, whether that be program participants, donors, supporters. Uh, you can drive donations and actually accept them uh, on your website. You can reach out to volunteers and show them opportunities. Uh, you can use it as an educational tool to let the general public know about your organization, but also share resources with your various audiences that your organization reaches. Uh, like I said, uh, it's kind of a more budget-friendly location. It's not something you have to uh, maintain in a physical sense, but it is something that can represent your brand and represent all of the information about your organization. Uh, you can also use your website, kind of take it a step further and use it for data collection and insights as well. So not only can you see things like top level information, how many visitors, where they're coming from, what pieces of your site they interact with, but you can also use it to capture, you know, quote unquote leads uh, from your constituents so that you can get them added to lists and reports. Um, you can also find out more about how people would like to view and interact with your organization. Um, you can also address accessibility and inclusivity needs um, by creating a website that uh, allows for those things. So what makes a good, uh, a great nonprofit website? So here are some things that we look for when, when we're starting building a website or when we're just evaluating something that's existing. Uh, we are looking for a site that is scalable and flexible. So it's it's impossible to know where your organization is going to go in the future, um, but you do know that you don't want to have to redo your website every time something like that changes. So it's important when you're looking at a website project or any updates to your website that the features that you're adding are things that can grow along with the organization. So you want to consider what might this look like in three years? What might it look like in you know, in even a few months um, and make sure that your site can scale um, to that. You also want to think about the user experience. So where are people, uh, how are they browsing? Are they coming from a mobile device? Are they on their desktop or laptop? Are they viewing from a tablet? What's that user experience like from each device? And can people get to the information that's relevant to them? One of the biggest struggles we see with nonprofits are you have various stakeholders. You have your supporters. You have your program participants. You have different types of audiences that are coming to your website for different reasons. You want to make it super clear what information is for which audience and make each audience member feel like the site was built for them. You also have integration opportunities to streamline your operations. So what can you connect to your website to help uh, automate processes that you have uh, that are either happening offline right now or manually? So what's wrong with traditional website design? Um, as you'll hear throughout this, we'll talk about how we take it a more growth-driven approach, but we like to identify what the problems are as we see them now. So First, uh, it's difficult to plan your website. So knowing that nonprofits are constantly changing, looking at things that happen like something like COVID um, or, you know, maybe you're you're planning a big capital campaign to, to build a new building or things like that makes it really difficult, especially in a nonprofit space, to plan what it's going to look like a year or two years from now and trying to figure out how you can build like something that's more kind of permanent, so to speak. Um, we typically see these high costs and long timelines because those plans are put together, trying to plan for something that you're not really clear on. Um, and then that creates like a, a limited update after you launch. So uh, if you talk to me long enough, you'll if you talk with me long enough, you'll hear me use a lot of different housing analogies. Um, I, I would liken this to, to buying a piece of land, 
thinking you're going to live there forever, building the house as big as you can on that piece of land. And then your family grows and now you're stuck with no more room to expand. You can't expand up. You can't expand out because you weren't looking ahead instead of thinking larger picture down the road. How can we spend less, get more and, and be more, more fluid. So a, a quick graphic to kind of identify how the, how the, the typical, um, process works versus what we call a growth driven design process. So the, the, uh, the gray line on your screen shows how that, how that typically happens. You plan, plan and launch the site. Uh, it takes a while to get, to get built up. And then by the time it's, you know, out there running, it's like, Oh God, so many things have changed. We have to relaunch this site. I'm sure many of you, even from the feedback, uh, in the initial question today are seeing that, you know, you've had a site that's been around for four years. Now it's time to completely overhaul and redo it. We just don't think that's the best best approach. Uh, and we have a track record we'll go through today and show how we, we address that. Um, ours is a little bit more you know, fluid and, and, and ever growing over time. So we're able to, to hit the ground running, get something launched quickly to start collecting information, getting feedback, seeing how the users are, are using that site uh, and then plan and grow in an iterative approach over, over time as part of that. So what that looks like is starting with the strategy phase, obviously we have to, to, to jump in and look at, um, you know, where are you now? What are you trying to do? What are some of your short and long-term goals? And knowing that we look at what, what, what I'll call like a minimum viable product, what's going to give us enough to, to hit the ground running, to, to have, you know, some meaningful impact to whether that's collect volunteers or donations or just, just drive, drive awareness. What do we need to do that? And then we use that to build what we call a launch pad website. So if, if you think of, um, you know, I've got a hundred pages of content. I have to, when I relaunch my website, I need all hundred pages of content. The reality is maybe 10, 15, 20 of those pages actually get a lot of your traffic. And the rest of it is just kind of like, um, like complimentary or maybe even content that's not even used. So we look at that and we say, how do we make these 10, 15, 20 pages, the best, the, most, the highest performing pages of the website that we can add to and build on over time. We launched that as part of your Launchpad website. Uh, and then we start planning. So looking at, okay, what, what's happening on the Launchpad website? What are we seeing clients, clients, customers, visitors, whatever, donors come here for? And what are they looking for while they're here as well? As we see that, then we start to plan the next phase of this and we develop that out. So let's say you launch a site and it's got a page for donations and you see a lot of people are coming in saying, you know, what type, what type of donor are you or how much do you want to donate or things like that? And they fill in like the other form on that page. And they say, oh, you know, I, I don't want to donate money, but I like to donate time. I can't donate money, but I can donate canned goods. I can't donate money, but I can, you know, I can provide educational material. So you say, okay, this, this is great. You know, we didn't know this was happening. And now we should, we should, we should plan a part of our website that is going to attract that and speak to that as well. So maybe that looks like, you know, building a landing page or building a few pages out that, that talk about uh, different uh, giving resources or programs that you can, you can, um, you can put out there. And then, launch that, add that to your ecosystem. And this just becomes this continuous improvement cycle. So it's this, it's kind of like this plan, launch, grow, plan, launch, grow, iterative phase, which doesn't mean that you have to spend all that time up front, creating those, migrating those hundred existing pages that you'd built before, designing all those hundred pages, spending that time launching it, and then realizing that nobody's using half the site or, or three quarters of the site. Uh, and then you have to change and pivot at that point. Now you've already spent money, you've spent time, uh, you know, your board's probably pretty mad at you because this is hasn't launched as they wanted it to. Um, and now you're in a tougher situation. So diving into what that that first phase, the strategy phase looks like, one of the common questions that we hear when we when we talk with nonprofits is what can I do? I have limited resources in terms of people available for, uh, you know, to put time into a website project. What is something that we can do before we engage with you that will help us be prepared for this project. So the strategy phase is one of the one of the things you can get a jump start on. Um, it'll be our job to help match these items here with kind of the technology solution with the website solution that'll fit best there. But if you can have a good idea of each of these items here ahead of starting a project, that'll really be a jump start for you. So you wanna have an idea of who is your target audience and who is it that you, that you need to reach with this website? And also, what do you wanna tell them? Like, what are some main questions that each person in your audience would be visiting the website in hopes of answering, that really helps kind of guide your content structure and your, your site overall. You also want to outline some goals for your website. So is it 
is it a goal that aligns with your organization? Is it to increase donations or to attract volunteers? Or is it maybe it's simply just to have uh, constituents engage with the information that you're sharing? So understanding what your goals are really helps us figure out how we want to lay things out, how to prioritize what we're going to put on the site, and then also what we want to how we want to set it up so that we're tracking these things and that we can measure it over time. Uh, you also want to take a look at your content. So if you have an existing website, or even if you don't, uh, you can do kind of an audit of your content. What is it that you have now that you want to keep and that's important to have on your website? What's something that might need your time and attention to update and bring up to date to put on the new site? And then what are some things that, that do don't exist at all right now that you would like to put on your new website. So you can do that, like I said, with your existing website and kind of look at each page and evaluate it that way. Or if you don't have an existing website, you can look at things like uh, if you have brochures or flyers or you know printed materials that, that you hand out, uh, that information can all be a basis for a website. And you can take a look at that and kind of use that as a place to start, collect it all in one place and organize it. That gives you a, a head start on your site. And then site structure, like I said, that's kind of, that's kind of where we come in and uh, start to help you understand how this content should be structured, what functionality you need on the site, what integrations might be helpful. We talk through all of that in the strategy phase to really plan out what the project is going to look like and what needs to get built. Kyle talked about the Launchpad site. So at this point, um, we've kind of decided this is what we need. This is how it's going to work. Um, part of that is uh, selecting a content management system. So figuring out what platform your site is going to be built on. We're primarily building sites on WordPress and occasionally on Wix at this point. Um, we also want to look at what is the user experience that your end users need. And that might be different for your different audiences. So we want to figure out kind of how to merge those things together for the optimal experience for everyone. We also go through a design process. So it's really contingent on your content. We want to make sure that the design is there to fit the information that you want to get across. And then we want to look at what are our initial integrations that are needed too? What are some simple things that we could connect to existing operations or processes that you have that could either take some uh, some items off of your team's plate or things that could make a better experience for your visitors. So this would be things like connecting a form to your uh, newsletter platform. Do you send a newsletter out through MailChimp or Constant Contact? We can connect a form that way. Um, things like your donor management system, connecting that and your donation form. Uh, collecting volunteers, uh, whatever it is that we identified in that goal, uh, we can look at some of the systems that you're using and see how we can tie those in with the website to make that more streamlined. And then phase three is continuous improvement. This is the piece that it is intended to, to kind of keep going on. So as your organization grows, your website's going to grow with it. And we're going to take a look at some of those met metrics that we outlined, the goals we outlined in the strategy phase. And we're going to track how we're performing towards those. Maybe the thing we build initially isn't resonating. Maybe we need new content or additional content to help your audience uh, achieve the, you know, the action that you want them to take on the site. And we can look Look at that as we go and we can make uh, we can learn about your audience we can correct some of our initial assumptions and we can adjust the website to fit that we can also adjust the website to fit as your organization grows so if you have new programs if you have new people join your team all of that can be updated and changed with the website without having to start from scratch so we can we can take a look at this. This is kind of what this looks like for TAP. So what does it look like for growth-driven custom website development? Um, we go through all of those phases closely with you. Uh, it's a highly collaborative process, and there are a lot of touch points throughout. Um, these are for, ideally, for nonprofits who currently have a, a website, but maybe have outgrown that existing website. So like a lot of you mentioned at the beginning in the chat, you're kind of looking to overhaul your site to add additional functionality to your site. That's the perfect fit for this growth-driven uh, custom website development product. 
We're going to touch on a few success stories of uh, recent websites that we've launched and organizations that we've worked with. Um, the first one here that we're going to look at is the Down Syndrome Association of Central Texas. Um, they came to us, uh, like what I was saying before, with a with an existing website that they had outgrown and that they were looking for a better user experience on the front end for their visitors, but also a better user experience for them as the primary team who updates the website on an ongoing basis. So um, one of the main focuses here was one design. Um, we kept it consistent, uh, kept it uh, consistent with their brand guidelines. Uh, we want it to look and feel similar to the brand that everyone was used to seeing. Um, but we also wanted to put some things in place that would better organize their content. So it's kind of hard to see here, but one of the things we did was really take an audience-centered approach. And they told us about the different audiences that they're trying to reach uh, with the resources available on their site. And one of the major pain points prior to the redesign was that it was difficult to find and update those resources. So if I was a medical provider or a new parent coming to the website for the first time, I want that user experience to be tailored to me. And that didn't necessarily happen on the old site. So what we did here, and Kyle, if you wanna to go to the next slide. What we did here was we were able to index all of their resources so that on the front end of the site, it's very easy to find what you're looking for based on the audience that you're from. So if you're a medical provider, a parent, um, and then you can, or an educator, and then you can also filter those by topic as well. Um, so not only was this is this easy now for users to find what they're looking for, it's also very easy for Down Syndrome Association to go in and manage and add additional resources. The next example here is One Pulse Academy. So um, this is the education arm of One Pulse Foundation, which is the nonprofit. Uh, One Pulse Academy is educating their target audience, and they have a bunch of seminars that happen in person that they wanted to catalog and place on a website so that people could access them later. So this is a great example of taking those things. It doesn't mean everything has to change to happen digitally. They didn't have to change the format of these events that they're happening, but they that they're having and hosting, but they did want to catalog those things that they're available for an audience outside of their geography. Um, and also that they're just available as an archive um, for people in the future to kind of spread their mission a bit further. So um, this website was created to kind of archive those uh, in person and virtual events that One Pulse Academy hosted. I'm going to go to the next one. So what this allows us to do is it made it very easy for One Pulse Foundation to add these events as they happen. So very easily, um, they were able to add events to an events calendar to say this is coming up. The event would happen most, most of the time in person. Um, so people would attend it, they would record it, they would capture photos. And then it was it's very easy now for them to move that event from an upcoming event to an archived event. And all of them are formatted in a very similar way. And kind of like we were saying for the Down Syndrome Association, now it's very easy to go through this archive of past events and look by topics, tags, uh, the date that the event happened. You can go and find anything that you're interested in and be able to kind of interact with the event like you were, you know, like you were there and like you were participating in person. So it does encourage future engagement with uh, these events. And then maybe some of those people that are viewing the archive, maybe they would come to the events uh, in person in the future. Great. So another one that we uh, we just completed recently um, in the last week or so, I think, uh, is a combined website for a few preschools. There was Green Lake Preschool and Woodland Hall Preschool, I believe. Um, so there, there was one person dedicated to manage both of these sites separately. Uh, they were having challenges keeping keeping them up to date, keeping the look and feel consistent or managing the look and feel at all. As you can see in the screenshots, uh, we have sort of like the before and after of what was there. So kind of just a bunch of text on a page, not really kept up to date and really didn't didn't showcase uh, the, I think the the polished brand that, that Green Lake and Woodland Hall wanted to achieve. So we started with them looking at, you know, what. Again, what we talked about, like the launch pad, 
what is mission critical? You know, what's the content that needs to be on every page? And how do we really articulate that as much as we can on one page of the site? Um, you know, having some some additional pages available for people to navigate through, but how do we get most of the point across on one page? The other thing that we also did was put them on what's called WordPress multi-site. Which, what's nice about this is it allows you to manage multiple websites from one common location. So you don't need different logins. You don't need different, um, you don't need to have a bunch of different users. You don't need to know how to work in those different systems. So we kind of build one general design. We customize it for each quote unquote brand. So with Woodland Hall and Green Lake Preschool in general, the site structure is the same, but different colors, different branding, so to speak. Um, and this allows us to make one update in one place and push it out to those different sites. It also allows like that ease of management um, and gives you one platform from which to host things from, to push information out to, um, to sync with different systems like Loom and Calendly and things like that for member support. So it really just ties all that stuff in, in, into one place very nicely. And then the next we want to talk about is uh, National Trafficking Sheltered Alliance. So this is a great example of uh, integrations and membership and how that can function on a website. So National Trafficking Sheltered Alliance is made up of a bunch of organizations that work in their space. Uh, members do purchase a membership, which gives them access to special content, which was the primary focus of this website. So the, the front end of the site, the public view of the site is, is kind of brochure style, right? It's, it's about here's what our organization is, here is what membership looks like, and here are the benefits of membership. You can also donate. Uh, anyone that comes to the site can uh, see ways to support. But then the, the real functionality piece of this site is in the membership. So each member has a login. All of their membership, as far as payments, renewals, who is active and who is not, is managed through the website. Um, there's also a hierarchy of members. So uh, while one since they have member organizations, there is a primary contact for each membership that is associated with the payment, but then they can also kind of provision additional users that can access this content as well. So other people that work at that member organization will be able to see what we see here. Um, the access to the member only content. Uh, so that includes things like events and the website has the ability to kind of discern between public events and uh, member only events. There is also the ability to sell member only tickets and pricing so that if there is an event that's public but members get a discount as part of their membership, uh, that is made possible through the website. Uh, we can also be, uh, kind of coordinate it on who the users are at any given time, have a public facing membership directory that those members have access to manage and update. So that takes the burden off of NTSA as the owner of these memberships to go through and make sure the contact information and the profiles of each member organization are up to date at any given time, the member actually can go in and make those updates uh, themselves. So we can assign owners and people who manage that. And I touched on the event registration as well. So we'll talk a little bit about our website maintenance and support. So this is another service that we offer for uh, existing websites that may need um, kind of that continuous improvement piece, right? So if you've gone through the strategy, you've gone through that launch pad, that initial website iteration, and you're happy with where your site is now, but you're looking to make updates to it on an ongoing basis, um, or even just have an extra set of hands um, that acts as a member of your team and can make these updates for you. Um, that is where our website maintenance services come in. You can see on the screenshot there where how you access those um, from TechSoup's site. Uh, this really looks different for uh, every organization as far as how they want to use this, but essentially our website maintenance services are a monthly bundle of hours that you get um, for our team to work on your website. It is a request-based 
uh, subscription service. So you let us know how we can help. You submit that through a ticket system and our team coordinates with you to make those updates. So you can submit requests throughout the month. We'll let you know how long we think something is going to take and how many of your hours it will use up. Um, we'll kind of communicate with you to set goals and set a kind of project timeline so that we're looking long term, that we're not just making short term quick updates. We want to make sure we have a plan in place as well. So um, on and each month we kind of chip away at that plan. These are the different tiers. And um, so each tier has additional hours that are included in that monthly subscription. It also allows for more complex work and resources as well. So um, the nonprofit's essentials package, that starts with basic updates. You want someone who's going to swap out the copy on your homepage, who's going to add videos, maybe create a new page or change out, um, you know, change out some images throughout. That's the type of thing that can be covered under that basic package. When you shift into the higher packages, you start looking at things like UI UX design, custom integrations, uh, creating any like custom coding that might be needed to connect with your systems or um, to help you know information display dynamically on your site. So you just look at a little bit more advanced resources and types of projects that are available to you as you as you scale the subscription. We work on the on these two content management systems. So if your site is currently built on WordPress or Wix, these are the two content management systems that we service under uh, our website maintenance services. And these are just uh, just a small selection of some of the uh, plugins and integrations that uh, kind of are we're working on most frequently. So. Um, the events calendar is an events tool that we use with WordPress as it, uh, Yoast SEO is for search engine optimization. WooCommerce is an e-commerce solution. If you have products that you need to sell on your site, um, the green G is give WP, which is a WordPress based donor management system. Elementor is our preferred page builder tool that we use that kind of turns WordPress into a drag and drop experience. Uh, we have Gravity Forms, which uh, is a, a pretty flexible and custom uh, form tool for WordPress. Buddy Boss is a, uh, a tool or a theme that allows your site uh, membership capabilities. It also allows for uh, almost like your own custom uh, social media platform within your site. So people that have traditionally used things like Facebook groups and run into limitations with that, um, like to have Buddy Boss as an option for members to share updates, share files, and kind of have that interactive uh, ability. And then we also integrate with HubSpot. We are a platinum HubSpot partner. Um, so we can help you not only set up and manage HubSpot on its own, but we can also help you integrate that with your website. Awesome. And before I jump into the hosting and security, uh, I just saw a couple of the same questions come through the chat. Um, somebody asked how many hours are included in the $4.99 per month cost. Um, great question. And I'll, I'll address a few of these things really quickly. Uh, so typically it's about three hours. I say about because we try, we want to manage this time uh, accordingly. So, you know, we have clients that will send us like 10 emails with like one different thing. Hey, change this to the, change this to that, change this picture. Uh, that's going to eat up your time, right? So we, we just ask that our client, that our, our, our clients um, batch things together so that we can, we can manage those things accordingly. And then you can get the most um, out of that time. So we say three hours just so it doesn't become excessive. That way it does, we doesn't put us in a situation where, uh, you know, it's the last day of the month and you're sending us that, you know, hundreds of requests, so to speak. Um, and then it does, as Melissa said, it does scale from there. Um, but it's also, you know, who's involved in those, in those, in those, um, those types of things as well. So if, you know, you want to have a page really designed uh, in those higher tiers, we actually would have a designer that would work with you and spend the time, you know, spend the time with your account manager to say, okay, this is what we need from this page. And then we would give you an estimate on how much time that was and whether that was something we were going to do in that month or push it to a following month. So we really work really closely with our clients to manage um, expectations and, and deliverables there. Um, we I do see some more questions coming through. We'll hold those till the end, but we'll make sure we get through as many as we can. So hosting and security, uh, specifically for WordPress websites, is something that we um, 
we manage for a number of clients. We probably got uh, four or 500 different sites managed at this point um, on an ongoing basis on WordPress. And there's a few things that are nice about this. The first is like everything that you get from a managed service here. Um, so again, this has to be on WordPress, but we're going to, you know, we, we make sure that things inc are included. Like you get an SSL certificate on the website without, without an extra charge. We have website backups, both on-site and off-site backups. So we have it, you know, on, on the server as well as off the server in case something does happen to it. Um, we are routinely running patches and updates to WordPress. We, uh, the caveat is we will only do that for supported WordPress plugins. So if, you know, you were to go out there and download something that wasn't supported, that had a vulnerability, um, that is kind of on you, right? That's like if you pay us to be your plumber and then you go and try to fix your plumbing yourself and it breaks, it's kind of, that's something, that's a problem you caused. Um, we we can help, but that's not included in the hosting and security cost. Um, manage PHP version updates. So this is just more tech talk stuff. Uh, managing caching. So this is keeping your site performing and keeping its site pre performing efficiently and effectively, as well as security monitoring and firewalls. So you're not getting inundated with um, bots or, or requests. The other thing that we include as part of the hosting and security, especially if you build a site with us, is licenses to a number of these, um, so a number of the tools. So some of the stuff like Melissa covered here, like the events calendar, uh, Gravity Forms, Elementor, WooCommerce, a lot of these have an annual cost. So if you were to go out there, I think we've kind of run the numbers before, um, but a lot of these will have like an annual cost upwards of, you know, $100 or $200 per license. And once you look at having those, um, those licenses added all together, you're looking at the, you know, thousand dollars or more just to get things like events calendar and forms and things like that, that are, um, you know, that, that have these, these paid licenses as part of that. We include our enterprise licenses to those, those tools, as long as you're a hosting security, um, client of ours. Uh, just so just a quick recap on some of these things before we jump into the questions. Um, I did see some questions about like getting consultations. Can we have the website reviewed? All that's going to fall under that that tab. On, if you go to TechSoup.org uh, and then hit the drop down for services, you'll see website services or digital marketing. Both of those will go to us, um, but each kind of has different things on it. So the digital marketing can be more geared towards things like, you know, managing campaigns, running emails, managing social media, things of that nature. And the website services are going to be specific to um, to the website services. That's the quickest way to get in touch with our team here, uh, whether it's setting up a consultation, having a review, or jumping right into one of the offerings that we um, that we mentioned here as well. So I'm going to start with the questions. I will just, please feel free to put those in the QA or the chat. I I've seen it going in both places. Um, I'm just going to start from the top um, and read through these probably answer some, give some to Melissa. Um, I saw someone ask if we have experience with Wild Apricot. Um, so we Wild Apricot is like a web, there's web publishing, there's email marketing, there's, you know, donor management, all that stuff, all on, all on that platform. We have worked on it. We are not, uh, that's not one of the ones that we work on the, the most frequently. As Melissa mentioned, we work um, more specifically with things like GiveWP, um, PubSpot, um, draw blanks on some of the donor management platforms. A little um, green light. Green light, yeah. Um, but we, you know, a lot of times we, we, we've we moved people from systems like that because there are challenges that that arise when you kind of take that all in one platform approach. You kind of end up with like a bunch of technical debt there. Um, and something you want to look at when you're looking at those integrations is a lot of these will have kind of native WordPress integrations available for them. And Wild Apricot is one of those that has has a plugin available for WordPress. So a lot of times that information will be available either before you select a system or in the support when you have one. So you can kind of see the the scope of the capabilities that are available natively from your system. Um, and anytime you're looking at anything custom, that's kind of how the, the pricing scales, but things that are available by default from the system you already have, that's likely something that's going to be a little bit more in scope for the project. So um, that's something to check out if you're curious about a specific system. Um, someone asked uh, who proofreads before adding to the site? Is it us or the comp or the, um, the nonprofit? Um, we kind of share this. So, you know, we, when we work with our clients, we can manage some of the content, we can build some of the content or the client can manage that content. We will proofread it. Uh, but we also, we don't, we don't sit with you and say, okay, like line by line, is this what you meant to write here? So what we're getting from you all, we would, we would expect that to be, you know, um, 
what's correct for the audience. So spelling errors, things like that, we would look at. But if it, you know, if it wasn't exactly the right messaging, we're not we're not the subject matter expert um, on on all these things. So we we put that back on the on the nonprofit or the client. And we can help you from a content perspective. We can help you with the structure of a content of the content. So if you're looking for, you know, I, I want to make an about page on my website, but I've never done that before. We can provide you with best practices and structure recommendations for how to build that page to help you, you know, kind of fill in the blanks as you're writing the content. We have content services available as well, content writing services available as well. Um, but in general, that content is being written by you and provided to us. Um, I see lots of site builders out there. Uh, what do you like about WordPress and Wix? Um, so I'm going to stick to WordPress. Um, Word, we like WordPress because it is uh, more than 25%. I actually think it's more almost 50% of websites on the internet now are on WordPress. There's a, a an ecosystem of millions and millions of people, of developers around the world um, and here in the United States that are versed on WordPress that follow the very specific WordPress standards. So uh, it's not the kind of thing where you're going to find only one agency that can work on it or a limited selection of people that, that know WordPress. It's very widely supported. NASA's websites on WordPress. I always say if it's good enough for rocket scientists, it's probably good enough for us. Um, so it's the the level of support there and a lot of the, the ecosystem that has, you know, training, uh, how to's guides, things like that. It's constantly evolving. They're constantly updating that um, to make it more efficient, more effective, to add more features and functionality, whether it's on the WordPress's core system or through the plugins. There was another question here about um, different apps and things like that. So just that that ecosystem of plugins that are out there. So if you want the website to manage memberships or manage events or manage donations or manage, uh, you know, a shopping cart, like, or manage something like a, a t-shirt builder um, or, um, or manage tours or manage listings, all those types of things can be built on a WordPress website without having to go use some other, some other tool out there. And there's very, very, uh, functional um, plugins that will solve most of the problems uh, or most most of your situations that also take into account best practices in user experience and best practices in user interface. So you also don't have to go out there and figure out like, okay, is this the most optimal um, you know, way to, to show an event on our site or for someone to register for an event or for someone to check out? Uh, and then those integrations that we talked about integrating with those different systems is what also makes it powerful. So being able to let, you know, for WordPress to integrate with something like HubSpot or MailChimp or Constant Contact um, or your, your social media networks or um, some publishing tool you might have without having to write any kind of custom code or find a developer to connect those two systems is why we really like that. Um, Wix, I would say, is like a level down from that from, from, from our perspective because it's it's great. We like Wix and we like we actually like taking sites from Wix to WordPress because we see that the the nonprofits have have kind of dipped their toes in and taken the first stab at, at you know like a a website and they've they've seen what they need they've seen what they don't need and that's a great place to start from without just making an assumption or a generalization about okay I need all these things so if you're with if you're able to sort of crawl walk run on something like Wix you can start crawling you can get something built you know you get a homepage up you can use one of their templates you can collect information. Um, get contact forms, get donations, things like that. But now you're ready to like move up to the next level where you want some more customization on that, or you want a custom design, uh, add more features and functionality. That's when we see that that transition from Wix to WordPress. And it's a, it's a pretty straightforward transition. But then at that point, you kind of know what you don't know. Uh, and that's a, a really, we always have, we always have success when we see clients that have, have, have taken that, um, taken that first step instead of kind of starting from scratch there. Um, let's see. I, somebody asked about this webinar being available later. Yes, there will be a, this is being recorded. We will set this, we will get an email probably tomorrow with a recording, um, and the link to the slides in there. Um, someone asked if we offer a website evaluation and provide a plan or strategy to improve user experience, like paid consultation, we do offer that. Um, it's also usually the first phase of any website project we build. So we could also roll that into, um, sort of a tiered, a tiered project where the first phase is peeling those layers back, giving, giving you the UI UX audit, looking at your content with you and creating a scope that is then yours to be able to take and say, okay, I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to take it to my, my existing agency. I'm going to take it to 
my friend I know that can build websites, but here's like the right sort of blueprint. So back to my housing analogy, it's the blueprint. Someone else can go build a house for you if they want, or we can take that blueprint and plan and put the house together for you. Um, someone at, said, do you use AWS? We do, but if for, uh, and, and our hosting infrastructure, it, some of our hosting infrastructure is on AWS, but it's really, we, we do make a decision based on the, the um, scope and scale of the client as well. Um, someone said HubSpot is expensive. Is there another CRM? Oh, that moved. Or marketing sales tool that mimics HubSpot, which might be a less expensive solution. There are a few. Um, I mean, there's, there's a, a ton, right? Um, we said Little Green Light does some of that stuff at like a, a base level to um, what, collect donations and do some of that automation. Um, there's tools like Act On or Active Campaign that that can do some of this for you. MailChimp has some, um, some more manual, but also um, comp, comp, comparable solutions. So does Constant Contact um, that can all be looked at. Um, this says webinars oriented towards large nonprofits. We have 110 members, a very small one, not donation driven, but membership driven. How do you find help through TechSoup? So TechSoup, I mean, Yes, this this I wouldn't say specifically towards large nonprofits, but with nonprofits that do have some of the budget carved out for um, website and development services. Um, but there are a number of um, we will show, there's some resources you'll see as part of this um, webinar email that you'll get. Um, but a lot of like how tos and even courses that that TechSoup offers that are more for like the do it yourself type of nonprofit where they would kind of manage this stuff on their own. Um, someone asked. If we are a subscription only service or we do a one-time makeover for an hourly fee, um, we will, depends on kind of what that is. We don't really like to be the so much of a, a one-time repair man because what we will always find is there are there's more there um, than meets the eye. So if it's just a quick project that we could hand over to someone, we can do that. Um, or we can just quote out like an hourly engagement for something, like if it's like adding a page. Um, but we don't typically get into the, um, I don't call it like home renovation business. Um, There's a see. question in the chat um, that says, if we already have a site built with Elementor, is the transition to your hosting and security and support pretty seamless? And I would say yes. For the hosting and security piece, um, that doesn't matter as much. Um, it just matters that it's on WordPress to migrate to our hosting and security. For the support piece, yes, that works really well. It's a, a, you know, a tool we already have. Uh, in our toolbox and are ready to jump in and work on your site in Elementor. So yes. Um, I'm going to jump through. Oh, here's another one. We joined TechSoup um, for access to the software we need. Expertise could be useful. Where what do we need to consult to find the information we need? Um, so that 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 will be like. I think this might be an Aretha question too, um, but this will be in this follow-up email that has links to a number of those different resources and kind of would help really get you on your way, I think, um, towards some of those different um, tools uh, and courses and things like that. Um, I'm going to jump into a couple, just a couple more things as part of this. So uh, one thing that we have available that you'll see is, I know this is like the the new hot thing, uh, AI, but we've, we've actually built a book that's got 80 or so chat GPT prompts to really help you uh, leverage AI and leverage things like chat GPT um, to help your nonprofit, whether that's from a content writing perspective, whether that's from website planning or user experience planning or audience and persona planning. So you'll see a link to that in this. Um, you'll also have a link to, uh, we've had people ask about the consultations. So there's a link in this, there'll be a link in this uh, deck for, those consultations that you'll see, um, like I said, tomorrow or uh, whenever we get this, whenever this email gets sent out through TechSoup. Uh, and then the other services are available with a link in this slide as well to, to some of the other things that that TAP offers that we didn't cover today. So we did just kind of go through like at a high level, some of the different services and solutions that are available through TechSoup, but there's, you know, we do much more than, than is on that surface as well. Um, Let's see, uh, someone said, we're in the infant stage with our first website leaning towards Wix. We like HubSpot as a potential hosting platform. 
Where can we get guidance on using Wix and related services thereof? Um, that would be again, so probably in this in this follow up email would would answer some of those questions. Um, or scheduling a consultation um, would also be a good a good kind of next step there to to point you down the right path. There's one that says as hosting included in the 499 per month website maintenance services, and those are actually separate. So the hosting and security uh, is its own subscription, and then the maintenance uh, subscriptions are in addition to that. Any more questions? If not, we can give you a few minutes of your day back. Yeah, I put my email in there for someone who asked about um, getting help. I refer to customer success. Also, someone said they had problems logging in. So I need to get you with the um, AMG. So please email me at asimons at techsoup.org and be very specific in your questions so I can get it to the right person. Cal, I'll let you have closing remarks if you have any other questions you want to answer. Just one more. Um, I saw a couple of questions about contracts and renewal length. Um, all the contracts are month to month. We just need a 30 day, you know, cancellation. So if you pay for hosting, for example, for a month, we are going to migrate you to our hosting um, there. So we would have to cancel that hosting at the end of the month. We usually want to give you enough time to get that moved off. We will not migrate you back off um, unless, except unless that's a, um, you know, an additional project that we need to, to undertake. Uh, and then someone asked, uh, if there was, if we connect, we assist with connecting with Salesforce. Uh, we certainly can. It really just depends on um, what version of Salesforce you have and what needs to be connected. Um, whether that's something that we need to create custom mappings for, we can use um, some built-in tools for. Great. Thank you all. This was a uh, great questions. Um, and at least be on the lookout for this. Uh, presentation in your email today or tomorrow, along with the recording, uh, and then you'll have links to, to reach out to us with any further questions, concerns. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.